Hello there, this is the Lost Media of Australia Iceberg. I'm sure you know how these things work by now. I've sorted these pieces of Lost Media by what I consider to be the most well known that you've likely heard of in some way, down to the least known which have next to no information about them. And just to make things interesting, I've included a couple of pieces of New Zealand Lost Media, because I've got to represent my cousins over the pond there. Anyway, let's dive. Neighbours episode 3896, aka The Wiggles episode. In 2001, The Wiggles' big red car rolled into Ramsey Street for Neighbours, and performed a concert for Lou's daughter Lolly. You might have seen a couple of clips show up, but the full episode has never seen a re-release, even with a bunch making it to streaming. You can find a copy at the National Film and Sound Archive, and original Yellow Wiggle Greg says that a script is on display at the Powerhouse Museum. The Wiggles episode of Neighbours did air three times in Australia and the UK, so perhaps some dedicated Neighbours or Wiggles fan does have it recorded, and just don't realise what they've got. Waking Fright Waking Fright is perhaps the best or the most famous piece of Australian lost media that's actually been found. It's a 1971 film based on the novel by Kenneth Cook, and you'll find it to be a disturbing look at masculinity and alcohol colliding against the Australian outback. You might know it for its infamous kangaroo shooting scene, which actually happened. Waking Fright was a critically acclaimed film, and it did well in France, but it didn't see much promotion in Australia or other places. The uncut version of Waking Fright was lost for decades or otherwise existed in poor quality until the film's editor Anthony Buckley made it his mission to track it down. He managed to find uncut negatives of the full film inside a Pittsburgh shipping container, which was destined for the garbage dump. Waking Fright was then restored in full and was screened in cans, and continues to be regarded as possibly one of the greatest Australian movies ever made. Australia's Naughtiest Home Videos this has got to be one of the funniest lost media stories ever. A spin-off of Australia's Funniest Home Videos, Australia's Naughtiest Home Videos was a 1992 special hosted by Doug Mulray on the Nine Network, and it includes such delights as people getting pants, animals with their private parts on display, and much more. On September the 3rd, 1992, Australia's Naughtiest Home Videos went to air, and then it went off the air. Nine's owner at the time, Kerry Packer, saw Australia's Naughtiest Home videos on TV, and he was so disgusted by what he saw that he called the station's master control and told them to get that shit off the air. And they did. Australia's Naughtiest Home videos was cancelled mid-broadcast and replaced by an episode of Cheers. Doug Mulray was also banned from Channel 9. The special was hidden away for decades until 2008, when, three years after Kerry Packer's death, Australia's Naughtiest Home Videos finally went to air in full, and you can check it out now on the Internet Archive. The Story of the Kelly Gang The Story of the Kelly Gang was a 1906 film, and it's said to be the oldest narrative film in the world. And, as you'd expect, it chronicles the life of the Kelly Gang, and Snake Kelly. We don't know a whole lot of information about the production of this film. We're not even sure about the identities of the actors involved. Just 17 minutes of this hour-long film have turned up in fragments over the last few decades. You can thankfully go watch them now, but the rest of the movie might be lost to time. Bluey Pilots I'm sure you know that Bluey first kicked off in 2018, but before it got there, there were two pilots made. The first was in 2016, which featured Bluey on a swing. It had a different animation style, and it was ultimately pulled 
as the creditors felt it was sent in the wrong message to kids. Another pilot was made in 2017 and was much closer to the bluey you'd probably know today. And it also formed the basis of the episode The Weeknd. Screenshots and other hints of these pilots had surfaced over the years, but the pilots themselves had never made their way online. But in February 2023, Twitter user That One Pickle shared them, allegedly from an anonymous source. Both has since been uploaded to the Internet Archive, where you can go watch them for yourself. Number 96 Number 96 was a Channel 10 show that debuted in 1972 and followed the lives of people in an apartment block. It was filled with sex, nudity, violence, drugs and LGBTQ characters. You might think of it as Australia's sauciest soap opera ever, but unfortunately it was another victim of tape wiping in the 1970s. You can find only 19 episodes of number 96's black and white era as all the others seem to have been erased when they switched to colour. I've got to say I'd love for this to be found, just because of how crazy and influential the show was. We need more wackiness on Australian TV. Steve Irwin Final Footage The 4th of September 2006 was a sad day for Australia when Steve Irwin passed away after being struck by a stingray barb. Steve was actually filming the documentary Ocean's Deadliest at the time and the cameras were rolling during his final moments. Steve's wife Terry has said that the footage of the incident has been destroyed and one of his cameramen did confirm its existence and also said that it should never see the light of day. I tend to agree. This is one piece of lost media that I'm happy to see permanently lost. Countdown Countdown was a live music show produced by the ABC in the 1970s. It was hosted by Molly Meldrum and you or perhaps your parents probably best know it for the cringe interview Molly did with Prince Charles. The show was taped but executives ordered these tapes to be erased and reused as a cost cutting measure. Even those who worked on Countdown tried to smuggle some of the tapes out of the studios when the order came down. To me it's hard to imagine that there's going to be a lot more episodes out there. There were so many that were just erased and home video recording wasn't really a thing in Australia at the time. Because of this, you'll find that Countdown is one of the National Film and Sound Archive's most wanted pieces of Australian TV history. Bananas in Pyjamas, Self Serve and Odd Socks Bananas in Pyjamas has to be amongst the most iconic Australian kids shows, at least until Bluey came along anyway. It follows the adventures of giant bananas B1 and B2, as well as their friends, which include teddies and rats among them. Bananas and Pajamas aired on the ABC from 1992 to 2001 and all 304 episodes have found their way online in some way. Except two of them. Episode 162 Self Serve and Episode 198 Odd Socks are nowhere to be found. You can see in TV guides that they definitely aired both in 1996 but only Odd Socks seems to have been repeated. I think it's really strange that there's no copies out there and only photos from these episodes exist. I can't find anything in my research to suggest why they might have been taken out of circulation. Hopefully one of you out there has recorded them and can make them available. The Graham Kennedy Crow Call On the 3rd of March 1975, one of the most notorious moments in Australian TV history happened. Graham Kennedy dropped the F-bomb live on air under the guise of making crow noises. But it was actually his creative way of getting out of his contract with Channel 9 through the obscenity clause. People do remember seeing this incident back in the day and Channel 9 claim it's in their archives, but they won't be releasing it. Do you think the crow call actually happened? And if so, did it ever get a release on a Graham Kennedy Best Of DVD? Or did it only air that one time, never to be seen again? 
The Wiggles 1995 Unaired Pilot You might be aware that The Wiggles launched their TV show on Channel 7 in 1998, but their first attempt at TV occurred back in 1995, and it was for the ABC. Even from the very small amounts of information available, you can tell that this 5 minute long pilot would have been a very different take on The Wiggles compared to what you might be used to. There are only two songs in this pilot, and the ABC told the Wiggles not to speak and just sing. They felt that the Wiggles didn't communicate with children well. But perhaps worst of all, you can see that they made the Wiggles wear standard t-shirts instead of their trademark skivvies. This pilot was rejected in the end, due to the creative differences between the ABC and the Wiggles themselves. You may have seen a couple of promotional shots, and there's also been a screenshot of the title card that shows the Harbour Bridge and the Sydney Opera House, but that's pretty much all we have for this one, and there's perhaps a good reason why. The manager of the wheels told the ABC to burn every copy of the pilot, and original Yellow Wiggle Greg also says he has a copy, but he cannot upload it anywhere due to the ABC having copyright over it. White Diamond Studio Version The studio version of White Diamond is perhaps the most famous lost song of Kylie Minogue's 30 plus year singing career. It was written while she was being treated for cancer and she performed it during her 2006 showgirl tour. This may have been the only time that Kylie has performed it live. Kylie fans, please correct me if I'm wrong on this one. A ballad version does exist, and you can find it as a bonus track on her ex album from 2007, but the original studio pop version has never released, and it's never leaked either. I think this is surprising since she had a documentary named after the song after all. Is it a rights issue? Could it be too personal of a song for her? I can only speculate, but it's got to be in her label's archive somewhere. The Price is Right 1970s Australian Version Way back in 1973, Australia debuted its own version of the American game show The Price is Right. It was hosted by Gary Meadows and only had a very brief first run between February 1973 and December 1974 on Channel 10. And that's about as much as you can find about the show. We don't even know how many episodes there were. A couple of photos from magazines are out there and there's a tiny amount of footage you can watch thanks to uploads by Channel 10 and Gary Meadows' son. But that's all. Slim Dusty Unreleased Demo Recordings Iconic Australian singer Slim Dusty released over 100 albums, but like most creatives, he had a lot of pre-fame work that never saw a wide release. Before his big break in 1947, Slim made a variety of demo recordings to show off his skills. Some were made into records that were sent out but few have turned up today. They could still exist in private collections, though it's debatable whether you'll ever have a chance to listen to them. Double Dare Australian Version Double Dare Australia ran from 1989 to 1992 on Channel 10. If you tuned in, you would have seen it follow the same format as the Nickelodeon show. Two teams of kids competing in physical challenges and a question and answer round, with the opportunity to dare the opposing team to answer and double their points. If you look it up on the Lost Media Wiki, you'll see that they claim that 700 episodes of Double Dare Australia were made, but I can't find an exact number or source for this. You can find a few clips on YouTube, but that's about all. There was also a spin-off called Family Double Dare in 1989, which is also mostly lost. It was hosted by none other than Larry Emder, and he roasted it years later, calling it the worst TV show in history. 
The New Adventures of Blinky Bill One of the most famous Australian literary characters, Blinky Bill has had a few TV shows over the years, but one of them is lost. The New Adventures of Blinky Bill was a live-action series featuring puppets and people. It ran for 26 episodes between 1984 and 1987 on the ABC. Blinky Bill might have been the focus, but you can also find some notable humour guest stars, including Benita Collins, Maggie Kirkpatrick and Jackie Woodburn. You won't find a home release of the new adventures of Blinky Bill, and it's unlikely it'll ever get screened again at this point either. One of the recurring human characters was played by Robert Hughes, who has since been sent to prison for, well, yeah, doing stuff to kids. Johnson and Friends, American Dub Johnson and Friends was a 1990 Australian TV series that featured a giant pink elephant toy with a supporting cast including an accordion, a truck, a hot water bottle, a robot and an orange dinosaur. In 1994, it was picked up by Fox Kids in the US and they decided to give it a completely new dub with American voice actors. Weirdly, you'll find that they decide to redub the whole series again after their original dub of the first 52 episodes was a success. You can find 48 episodes of the original dub, but just 9 of the full 78 episode redub have been found. As a 1990s show, these redubs could still be on VHS, taped by enthusiastic Americans. So, if you're an American that saw it back in the day, check your collections. You might have something. Neighbours Uncut Deaths Full credit to Redditor Lazy Importance 1276 for highlighting these. Neighbours is no stranger to killing characters off, but two particular deaths were censored for air, though we know that they were shot. In 1996, Cheryl Stark was struck by a car and passed away, but in the ep that went to air in Australia, you never actually see the car. There's just a weird cut between Cheryl walking across the road, a screeching car, and Cheryl lying on the ground. We know it actually got filmed, as this production photo shows. Cheryl wasn't the only one to die that year though. Character Cody was shot while in their home. In the episode, police are stalking out the street for some drug dealers. One of them has a gun and it goes off during a struggle. Cody is struck by a bullet and you see her on the ground already as Luke ducks the gunfire. It's really weirdly edited and it feels wrong not to see Cody's reaction to being shot. Supposedly both episodes were screened uncensored in the UK on Tarrant TV, but without any uploads, it's tough to tell whether this actually happened. The editing around the crucial moments is awkward enough that you'd have to think that both scenes exist. Maybe the uncut episodes will make it to streaming one day. Until then, we can only hope that someone has an actual copy. Dane Nelly Melba Funeral Procession Recordings Dane Nelly Melba was an Australian opera singer who was renowned all over the world and her death in 1931 was a big deal. Her passing received extensive coverage in newspapers, but only snippets of film and radio still survive today. It's still somewhat possible that you could find recordings of her funeral procession, but it'll take some digging. Cheese TV A rapper show on Channel 10 Cheese TV aired from 1994 to 2004. It was hosted by Jay Gatt and Ryan Lappin, and they did interviews and skits between various cartoons and anime shown on the Cheese TV block, including Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Transformers, and Techno Man. In later years, Jade and Ryan were joined by another co host named Lenka, who has since gone on to become a famous singer. They were also sometimes joined by sighting interpreter Karen which I think is a pretty cool example of making a kids TV show accessible. As a rapper show, it wasn't taped a lot, leading to a lot of segments from Tease TV becoming lost. 
pieces have wound up online over the years, including some uploaded by Jade and Ryan themselves, but a full release is yet to be seen. Are you being served in Australia? This is a bit of an anomaly in sitcom history. Are you being served in Australia is a 1980 version of the English comedy series. It ran for 16 episodes and they're recycled scripts from the original version. The series features John Inman's character working in a department store in Australia and has an Australian cast as stand-ins for UK counterparts. Mrs Crawford is like Mrs Slocum, Mr Randall shares many traits with Mr Lucas and so on. You can find all episodes of Are You Being Served in Australia except for one. Season 1 Episode 3 Mrs Crawford Senior Person Since there's only one episode missing online, I feel like there's a decent chance it could still be found. Someone may have taped it back in the day and held on to their copy, not realising what they have. Young Talent Time Airing from 1971 to 1988, Young Talent Time was a TV showcase for young Australian sinners. It was hosted by Johnny Young and featured the likes of Tina Arena and Danny Minogue. While it's well remembered by those who watched it back in the day, you can't see most of the episodes from 1971 to 1978. They're lost. The National Film and Sound Archive only hosts the pilot and a couple of stray episodes. Skippy Adventures in Bushtown A 1997 animated series based off the famous live-action kangaroo, Skippy Adventures in Bushtown has Skippy as a park ranger and he gets up to all kinds of adventures around Bushtown, often butting heads with the local mayor, who's a crocodile. And Skippy has a girlfriend in this show, good for him. Out of 26 episodes, Eight episodes still seem to be lost of this series. Producers Flying Bark have uploaded the intro to Skippy Adventures in Bushtown to YouTube, so maybe they do still have the masters. Perhaps they'll re-release it one day. A very aggressive vegetable. This is quite possibly the shortest thing on this iceberg in just about every way imaginable. A Very Aggressive Vegetable was a series of six 30 second animated shorts. Unsurprisingly, you'll find it has a bunch of vegetables getting pretty mad at humans. These shorts were available on Nick.com and it did air from 1998, but it seems to have vanished not long after. Most of A Very Aggressive Vegetable made its way online, but for years, one short was missing. Zucchini. Then, in August 2023, YouTuber The Retro Room Games uploaded the missing zucchini short, marking a very aggressive vegetable as found. Guinevere Jones. A 2002 medieval themed show, Guinevere Jones features a girl named Gwen, who balances the drama of high school life with battling wizards and the like. You might know this show has been the first on-screen role for none other than Thor himself, Chris Hemsworth. All of Guinevere Jones is on YouTube in Russian, but there's still a lot of English language episodes missing. By all accounts, it's not likely to receive a home release anytime soon. Captain Thunderbolt and 3-in-1 1951's Captain Thunderbolt and 1957's 3 one are both films made by New Zealand Australian Cecil Holmes. You'll find that Captain Thunderbolt recounts the exploits of a real life bushranger, while 3 one is a study of everyday Australians struggling against the wealthy and institutions in the late 1950s. Both films saw a very limited release and lack of support in Australia, which many have attributed to the communist leanings of Cecil Holmes. A cut-down TV version of Captain Thunderbolt and the complete 3 one do exist at the NFSA, but they've never seen a wide release to the masses. I think you can consider both of these effectively lost. 
Girl TV. Screening from 2003 to 2005 on Channel 7, Girl TV was a magazine style TV show. It screened in the afternoon and was aimed at teenage girls. If you watched it, you'd find interviews, music, and more. Girl TV featured four main hosts, and one of them went on to become a member of High Five, so that's kind of cool. The series ran for just two seasons, and there were some repeats, but it's since become lost. Today, you'll find only one full episode of the series online, thanks to an upload by Mr. Simple Simon 1987. You can also find some interview clips, but that's it. Magic Mountain Magic Mountain was a 1998 co-production between the ABC and China Central Television. If you watch it, you'll see some actors in suits and some really weird scenes, including some characters who implied to be feeling the effects of inhaled substances. While you can find all 52 episodes of the Chinese dub, there are still 10 episodes of the English version that are yet to be recovered or uploaded for everybody to enjoy. Sonic Live in Sydney Back in the late 90s, Seeker World once had a show called Sonic Live in Sydney. I talked about this in another video of mine, and I mentioned there were two shows, one with suit actors and the other with just puppets, but this may in fact be incorrect. I received a comment from a big time Seeker World collector to say that only the puppet one was actually a thing. In any case, we only have some photos and a bit of music. There still isn't any footage you can watch of Sonic Live in Sydney anywhere. Hopefully it'll turn up one day. It'll be a great time capsule of 1990s Sydney and video game history. Storm World Storm World was a 2009 sci-fi series aimed at teens, filmed in both Canada and Western Australia. It features kids struggling to survive after their boat gets sucked into a parallel world. Naturally, you'll see them battle the elements and hostile people, all the while trying to find their way back to their own world. Storm World ran for 26 episodes and screened on both Channel 9 and the ABC, but seems to have disappeared. Outside of synopses and some scatter clips, you won't be able to find much for this one. Storm World is recent enough that I'm confident it still exists in the production's archives, but there's nothing to suggest that they'll be re-releasing it. Shortcuts A 2001 drama that aired on Channel 7, Shortcuts focused on the lives of students in a media studies class. The key to the show was the cameras used by the students. If you look on the production company's website, they'll really hammer this point home, talking about how the students make dramas and comedies, and we see them, as well as personal diaries, and how they use them for spying, and even school projects. Shortcuts ran for just a single season of 26 episodes on Channel 7, before repeating on ABC, and that's it. You can currently find 13 episodes of Shortcuts thanks to YouTuber The Cool Zone 101. Short scenes have also been uploaded by music composer Jen Anderson. Beyond these, you won't find much of Shortcuts out there. Lizzie's Library A 1995 series on the ABC, Lizzie's Library is about Lizzie and her dog BJ. They run a library out of Lizzie's van spreading literature to all of the townsfolk. The town and to all of its citizens are in stop-motion animation style, and it might remind you of something like Feynman Sam. Lizzie's library is narrated by Play School's Nanny Hazelhurst, so I think that's kind of cool. Out of 26 episodes, 18 episodes of Lizzie's library have thankfully made their way online. Stop-motion is a lot of work, and I really hope this one can be found. Freaky Freaky was a 2003 New Zealand horror anthology series aimed at kids. If you watched Are You Afraid of the Dark, it was kind of like that. Freaky went pretty hard and scared the kids who saw it, 
and many of those kids have commented online over the years. After its first airing, Freaky did get repeated here and there, but it never received an official release, and so it became lost. Luckily for us in March 2016, Redditor Golden Molas somehow had the episodes, and they've since all been uploaded to YouTube and the Internet Archive. TV Burp Based on the British series of the same name, TV Burp was a 2009 TV show featuring comedian Ed Coverley roasting clips from various TV shows such as Neighbours and Australian Idol. TV Burp aired on Channel 7 and it was a bit of a dud. It got cancelled after just one season of 8 episodes. It wasn't without its dedicated fans though, with many commenters on the TV Tonight blog hoping for its return. For the longest time, you could only find a single episode and stray clips online, but in August 2023, user Exisod uploaded the full series of TV Burp to the torrent website The Empire, and they've since been made available on YouTube. Eat Carpet Airing from 1989 to 2005, Eat Carpet was a programming block which screened short films from across the world. It was hosted by Annette Chunwa on SBS, and it's thought that Eat Carpet screened over 3,000 films from short filmmakers, spanning different genres and usually getting quite trippy and experimental. Despite such a long output, you can find barely any episodes or films from Eat Carpet today. And I think that's a shame. Who knows what kind of filmmaking talent might be buried in there. Rock and Roll This was a 1959 Australian rock documentary by Lee Robinson. It was filmed over two days at rock concerts in Sydney and some of the featured acts included The Crescents, Lonnie Lee and Johnny O'Keefe. Rock and Roll screened in both Australia and New Zealand where it was very successful. You'll find that it did have some issues though that caused it to be lost. Film Commissioner Lee Gordon restricted its release as he was unhappy with standard distribution models of the day. American singer Fabian was removed from the original cut, and another performer, Johnny Devlin, claimed the film somehow defamed him. Rock and roll was lost for decades, until in 2020, when Mark Iaria found it on a nature strip, likely days away from ending up in garbage. Mark restored the film, and it's since enjoyed select cinema releases across Australia. Professor Poopsnagel's Steam Zeppelin Professor Poopsnagel's Steam Zeppelin was a 1986 show and it was a spin-off of the TV series Secret Valley and I get real chitty chitty bang bang energy from this one. The show features a bunch of kids that go in search of Professor Poopsnagel right after he gets captured by persons unknown. Six parts of the series were made but you can only find fragments today online. The Dog and Cat News This is yet another piece of lost media from the ABC archives and another 5 minute show, but it's a lot of fun. The Dog and Cat News is from the mid 2000s and it's exactly what it sounds like, a dog and a cat presenting the news for 26 3 minute episodes, but since then you'll find that it's faded away. 10 episodes have made their way to the internet archive, and apparently the producers had a copy of one episode on their Vimeo, but you can't watch it today. Catch Candy For Catch Candy, you have to go back all the way to 1973. Catch and Kate live with their uncle and run away one day when they think they've unalived him with a roller skate. The two kids hide out in a zoo and are helped along the way by various people, including that one guy who was on a country practice. Catch Candy was supposedly exported overseas, but out of 13 episodes, you can only find 7 online today. It's hard to tell whether more will turn up after all this time, but you never know. The 1924-1925 Ashes series 
The Ashes is probably the most famous event in Australia's cricket calendar, but you'll find very little coverage of its early years. During England's tour of Australia as part of the 1924-1925 Ashes, several radio stations did cover the game, and these were the very first broadcasts of any test cricket match, and the first ball-by-ball coverage of any cricket game. This Ashes series was a very historic event, but almost none of it was recorded. There are some video clips and photos which exist of this Ashes series, but the actual radio coverage doesn't seem to have been recorded at all. It might be lost forever. Wormwood A 2007 series with very little concrete info on it, Wormwood is a kooky kids show that seems inspired by Paul Jennings. Well, allegedly anyway. You can find a Reddit thread about the series and people do seem to remember watching it on Channel 10 and the ABC, but you won't find much else about it. A couple of determined Redditors did contact the international sales company for this series. They said they had it on tape, but it'd be costly to digitise. You could find another source of episodes at one point that had eight episodes available, a website chronicling movies and TV shows that feature toilets being used. Yeah. Unfortunately, the YouTube videos on this site are no longer working, and there's no way for you to contact the website owner. Kitu and Wuffle. I can find almost no information on this one. Kitu and Wuffle is another 5 minute ABC kids show which aired in 1997, and apparently it also got a run on Nick Jr. It's about an alien named Kitu living life and getting up to all kinds of shenanigans with their dog Wuffle. As far as I can tell, Noni Hazelhurst did all of the voices for this one. You can only find 9 episodes of the 26 episode season online, and all of them were uploaded 10 years ago. Wildcat Wildcat was a 2000 TV show that featured a young girl that started to become a were tiger kind of creature. If you watch my weird kids show iceberg, you'll see that I talked about it there, and at the time, there was only one image, but since then, someone has uploaded two promos to the internet archive that contain footage from Wildcat. Sadly though, you can't find any of the 13 full episodes online, and I've got no idea if it will ever be released. The Interpreteris, Vega 4 and Phoenix 5 I'm putting these three all in one entry as they're pretty closely linked. A very early sci-fi series that took cues from Star Trek, the Interpreteris was about a spaceship of the same name which explored the galaxy 500 years into the future. Six episodes were made and were very clearly on a budget, with its props made up of everyday items and special effects, but it still had spin-offs. Vega 4 in 1968 was a seven episode series featuring an experimental spaceship that can venture when the Interpreteris cannot, and Phoenix 5 was about another spacecraft altogether. The three series share characters and some sets, and are all set in the same universe. A couple of episodes have made their way to YouTube, and you can also find them on some other platforms, but you won't find much else otherwise. Swinning Swinning was a bizarre ABC kids show that aired in 1997, featuring people in these sort of monkey costumes, and they did a bunch of really weird things. For the longest time, you could only find a handful of episodes online, but then, in January 2024, YouTuber Johnson and Noddy upload the full series in all of its bizarre glory. I'm glad to see this one found. School Rules School Rules was a 2002 documentary series that followed the lives of nine students at Selwyn College in New Zealand. It had a total of 13 episodes, but you can't find any footage anywhere. There are some promo images that have popped up over time, but that's about it. It's thought that School Rules may have had a home release due to an image on the production company website, but this is just speculation and there's no evidence that you could actually buy it. 
copies are available at the New Zealand Sound and Vision Archive, but so far there's no indication that they'll be made public. Roller Coaster A rapper show on the ABC, Roller Coaster was hosted by Elliot Spencer and ran from 2005 to 2010. It would sometimes have skits that would involve Elliot introducing the next show in the day's lineup. I really don't know how much of this one might be out there, though you can find some clips online. Hopefully, the ABC have preserved Roller Coaster. Ketchup Cats Who Can Cook This was a very short lived animated series about anthropomorphic cats who run a cafe. Ketchup Cats Who Can Cook was a co production between Australia's Southern Star and Japan's NHK, airing in Japan from October 98 to March 99. Unfortunately, we don't know when and where it aired in Australia though. There were 65 5 minute episodes of the series made, but you'll find barely any of them out there today. There's no full episodes of the Japanese version of Ketchup Katsu Can Cook, and now the Australian version just 22 have surfaced thanks to a pretty unlikely VHS release. Since it had a home release, I'm quietly optimistic that more of Ketchup Katsu Can Cook could still be in Southern Star's archives, though whether they'll ever show it again is another matter altogether. The Magic Shoes The Magic Shoes was a 1935 short film and a retelling of the Cinderella fairy tale. It stars Academy Award winner Peter Finch and Hella Hughes, daughter of former Prime Minister Billy. You can find a couple of production stills of The Magic Shoes, which were found in 2006, but otherwise we don't have anything from it. The Magic Shoes didn't secure a proper release and wasn't very successful, so I think it would be a stroke of luck for this to survive today. Balinese Slapping Fish Balinese Slapping Fish was a series of shorts aired on Nickelodeon Australia in 1998. It shared a lot in common with a very aggressive vegetable, and for good reason. Both were produced by Fudge Puppy Productions. You'll find that each short features a variety of situations which end with the two fish hitting each other, in a video game, on a plane, and even at the Olympics. Balinese Slapping Fish is a unique case where all the shorts were found in 2015, then lost, and then all found again by November 2022, after they were uploaded to YouTube and the Internet Archive. Splatterlot Splatterlot was a 2011 game show for kids, featuring a bunch of obstacle courses and physical challenges with a medieval theme, and it featured contestants from Canada, the United Kingdom and Australia. Each country had its own hosting segments and commentary. Canada had Jason Agu and Matt Chin, Dick and Dom hosted the UK edition, and the Australian version was hosted by Scott Tweedle and Kane Tremels. While you can find some episodes of the Canadian and UK versions, there's nothing out there for the Australian one, except for a couple of promo clips that the ABC made. Splatterlot was available on ABC iView at one stage, but it seems to have been removed. Who knows if it'll be back. News Free Zone News Free Zone was a 1985 comedy series from the ABC, featuring Grainy Bond of Auntie Jack fame. It was shown at 6pm, and that's quite unusual as that's normally a time slot reserved for the news, and that was kind of the point. It was a news free zone after all. This sketch show features such bits as Kevin Kavanagh's culture, and a game show called The Never Ending Story. Outside of a single clip on YouTube, you can't really find much of this one out there. The National Archive of Australia appear to have copies of each episode, and the ABC might have it in their archives, but otherwise it's nowhere to be seen. The Private World of Miss Prim A 1966 sitcom airing on Channel 9, there's barely any trace of the private world of Miss Prim today. You won't find out much about the show either, outside of its cast and basic premise, a secretary who works at a children's court and is prone to flats of fancy. The show wasn't very successful, and only 11 of its 13 episodes were produced 
before Channel 9 decide to just cancel it all together. You can find the private world of Miss Prim on the NFSA's most wanted list. Even they only have the pilot episodes. Given that it screened at a time when home recording wasn't a thing, and all the episodes didn't even go to air, I think the private world of Miss Prim could be gone for good. The Off Show The Off Show was a 1977 ABC series of just 13 episodes, and apparently it was banned before it even went to air. The Off Show was a sketch comedy that featured Graham Bond, perhaps best known for the Artie Jack Show, as well as Gary McDonald and other actors. If you read newspaper coverage from the time, The Off Show was supposed to explore all the connotations of the word off, like off-key music and tearing your head off. In any event, it went to some wild places, and according to a blog I found, the ABC heads found it quite offensive. One sketch was for a sitcom pilot for Leave It To Jesus, which featured Mary and Joseph Carpenter and their son Jesus, with their sheepdog Herod. So offended were the ABC that they cancelled the off show and wiped all of the tapes, possibly making it permanently lost. Weirdly though, you can find a CD of Auntie Jack Show songs that also feature the off show theme and the theme for Leave It To Jesus, so at least there's a little bit of the show out there. Great Temptation, Valerie Episode. Airing from 1970 to 1974, Great Temptation was a TV quiz show hosted by Tony Barber. According to Tony though, one episode of Great Temptation didn't go as planned. During this particular taping, a contestant named Valerie won the game but collapsed on stage after being told the good news. Tony would later be told by another staff member that Valerie had passed away. Though the episode was taped, it never went to air and the tapes used for Valerie's episode were likely just reused, making it gone for good. Cushing Kids First airing in the U2000 on Channel 9, Cushing Kids was another in the long line of kids shows with costume actors and was created by the team from High Five. If you watch Cushing Kids, you'll see some talking cushions which live in a magical land beyond the clouds and among the characters, were a storekeeper, twins, a baby, and many more. Out of 23 episodes made, you can find seven full episodes and some clips online, thanks to the efforts of YouTubers such as Classic GIO and SG DVD Rip. Larrikins. I'm honestly shocked that I haven't heard of this one before. A proposed DreamWorks animated film which began development in 2017 Larrikins was about a bilby who gets kicked out of home and goes on an adventure across the Australian outback. You'll find that Larrikins had a stacked voice cast of Australian talent, including Hugh Jackman, Naomi Watts, Rose Byrne, Ben Mendelsohn, and many others. It also had music by Tim Minchin. Most of the film was completed, but unfortunately in 2016, DreamWorks was bought out by Comcast and in 2017, Larrikins was cancelled. Tim Minchin was not pleased about this and wrote that the film's cancellation filled him with impotent fury and sadness. Tim also said that it was used as a corporate write-off during a company takeover. While there was interest from Netflix and Animal Logic to buy the film, new execs in the wake of the Comcast DreamWorks takeover made it too expensive. Some of the assets of Larrikins were used to make the short film Bilby, and you can find various animation sequences and other imagery uploaded by those who worked on it. It's highly unlikely that we'll ever see a complete version though, and I think that's honestly a shame. Thylacine Sound Recordings We have many extinct animals in Australia and perhaps the best known of these is the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger. The thylacine was declared extinct in the 1930s and we do have some remains and footage of one in captivity. But the one thing we don't have is a thylacine sound recording. From eyewitness accounts, 
it seems that the final scene was described as mostly silent, but it would sometimes make a coughing barking noise and puppy-like yipping noises while hunting. You could theoretically find sound recordings of the thylacine, as the equipment to record them did exist back in their lifetime, but it would be incredibly lucky for anything to survive today. It's just another layer of confusion and doubt around the thylacine's story. I did talk about them in an old video, and recent research has seriously challenged the idea that the last thylacine died after being shut out of its cage. Who knows what else we might know about the thylacine in the future, all the knowledge that we've lost. Bobby the Bus Bobby the Bus is a New Zealand kids show, and I'm not even sure of how many episodes it had. Created in 1999, Bobby the Bus is a stop motion TV show featuring sentient vehicles and people, so there's a few questions there. You can find a handful of episodes on YouTube, but there might be more. Bobby the Bus doesn't even have an IMDb page, and it's clear some effort went into it. I hope we can find more at some point. J&D Malone and the Night O'Clock Tiger I've done a whole deep dive into this one before, which you should totally check out if you haven't. In short though, J&T Malone and the Night O'Clock Tiger was a 1984 ABC Kids TV special based on a book of the same name, and it scared the hell out of kids who saw it back in the day. There's barely anything out there to suggest it existed, but at least half of it has been recovered. Someone uploaded the second half to YouTube. The first half of Jane Tim Lone and the Nine O'Clock Tiger is still in the wind though, and it seems that even the ABC no longer have the master for it. I still have hope that the full special will turn up somewhere. It was used as a school teaching aid after all. Again, if you're an Australian school teacher, then go see if you have any old VHS tapes at your school. You just might find the tiger. Swap Shop the 1988 TV series Swap Shop is exactly what it sounds like from the title. Airing on the ABC, Swap Shop gives us a glimpse into the lives of 40-something George and his aunt Mimi, who open a shop that relies not on money, but the barter system. In the very first episode, we can see a woman trading a cow for a saxophone. 56 episodes were made, but you can only find 7 online today along with an 8th video only special that has been uploaded. Swap Shop is recent enough that the ABC could still have master copies of other episodes, but I wouldn't hold my breath on them releasing them. Alpha Scorpio Another ABC sci-fi show, Alpha Scorpio comes from back in 1974. This show features some uni students who start seeing some very strange things happening whilst on holiday at Aries Inlet. Only six episodes were made, and all of them are in black and white. If you look at the NAA website, they do appear to have some copies in their archive, but otherwise, Alpha Scorpio is effectively lost, and doesn't look like getting a release. The East Fremantle Sharks 1980s Song The East Fremantle Sharks are an AFL team playing in the Western Australian State League, or the Waffle if you will. If you go back to 1985, they had a particular theme song that they used very briefly. You can hear parts of it in the 1985 Waffle Grand Final, which the Sharks won by the way, but the whole song is nowhere to be found. East Fremantle have been contacted, but unfortunately they have nothing in their archives about this song. Six of the best a teen drama which first screened in 1984, Six of the Best was one of the earliest roles for Gina Riley, who you probably best know for Kath and Kim. Other than these little tidbits, you won't find much about Six of the Best out there today. You can find footage from one episode online, but other than that, I don't think there's much of this one out there. The Gyra Ghost Mystery the Gyra Ghost Mystery is a 1921 movie that was based on an alleged poltergeist incident in Gyra, northeastern New South Wales. You'll find that the film itself was a bit of a dud. Today, we only have a poster available for the Gyra Ghost Mystery. 
not a single film reel has ever been uncovered, and given the age, it could be gone forever. The Eggs Unaired Pilot The Eggs was an Australian Canadian co production made in 2004, featuring, well, eggs. They travel the universe in search of planets with new sounds so they can make some great music. The X was lost for a while, but today you can watch all the series on YouTube. There was supposedly a live action pilot's mage though, and it featured people in suits. It was filmed, but only a soundtrack has surfaced to date. I'd be very surprised if we ever saw this unaired pilot. Bunyip Bunyip was one of those 5 minute filler cartoons from the ABC archives, debuting in 1987. You won't find much information about Bunyip out there, but according to the National Film and Sound Archive, it had 21 5 minute episodes. A VHS release was carried out, and you can find some episodes on YouTube, but there's only 10 of them that are complete. There's also a snippet of another episode called Bunyip's Birthday that screened on the BBC. Could there still be more Bunyip episodes out there? If you watched the ABC in the late 1980s, then you might want to check your tapes. The Dress Up Box This one is all the way from New Zealand and I couldn't find much about it. From what I did find out though, The Dress Up Box was a kids show aimed at kids under 10 and had a bunch of music and dress ups and a general fantasy theme and aired sometime around 2003 and 2005. Redditor Dress Up Box Throwaway has done a pretty good write up on their own search and I encourage you to check that out. In short though, you can find the first two seasons on YouTube and others likely exist in New Zealand's National Sound and Vision Archive. Hopefully, the rest of the show will be digitised and preserved. Words Fail Me Words Fail Me was a 1981 educational TV series and it was an early showcase for one of Australia's great satirists, John Clarke. This one doesn't seem to have stuck in the public consciousness, and you can find barely any information about it, or signs of its existence. You can find a couple of stray apps online, and the ABC at least acknowledges it on their Facebook and YouTube pages, but there's no sign of a full release, whether streaming or otherwise. The Afternoon Show Stephanie Osfield Run The Afternoon Show was a rapper show for children's TV which aired on the ABC from 1987 to 1993. It featured hosts and segments that were playing to other shows on the program block, such as Mysterious Series of Gold, Captain Planet, Finders Keepers and Monkey. The Afternoon Show had a couple of different hosts over its run and there has been some footage emerging but you can find nothing from Stephanie Osfield's time in 1991. There's no footage or even a single photo of her on set. I don't really know if the ABC would have kept any footage like this, so if anything of Stephanie Osfield's time on the afternoon show does survive, it'll be in someone's VHS collection, probably while they were taping another cartoon on the afternoon show block. Alexander Bunyip's Billabong Based on the books by Michael Salmon, Alexander Bunyip's Billabong was a TV rapper show following the adventures of Alexander Bunyip, who is of course, a giant Bunyip. Alexander Bunyip's Billabong ran from 1978 to 1988, and the character has also received some media coverage, merchandise, and even a statue. But today, you'll find almost no footage of the show itself. Magic Box a 1992 to 1996 New Zealand TV series, Magic Box attempted to teach preschool kids about reading through song. It combined live action with stills and a bit of stop motion animation. You can watch one full episode on YouTube and the New Zealand Sound and Vision archive also has some as well, though none have been made public. There's a twist to this tale though. In a Reddit thread about the series made by Templex on r slash New Zealand, one poster claimed their brother was one of the Magic Box kids and had the full series on VHS. Another user said he was producer Peter Stretch and was looking for them as well. Peter's copies had been damaged by a flood and was hoping to get digital versions 
of those VHS tapes. So far, I don't know if this has happened, leaving Magic Box still lost. The 1994 Australian Grand Prix Collision Fan Footage At the 1994 Australian Grand Prix, race car driver Damon Hill attempted to overtake Michael Schumacher when the two men collided. The actual crash was of course caught on film, but it's been speculated that Michael Schumacher intentionally triggered it so he would somehow win his first World Drivers Championship on points. You can see online that a lot of people thought that Schumacher's claims of innocence were dubious, to the point where an official investigation was conducted. The official race footage was reviewed and they also took fan cam submissions. Schumacher was found innocent, but the fan footage has never been released to the public. Rumours have persisted that at least one piece of the fan cam footage shows that Schumacher may have actually caused the accident deliberately, as has been noted by Glenn Freeman from the Bring Back V10's podcast. I think it's pretty unlikely that you'll ever see any of this fan cam vision of the crash though, unless that original fan comes forward with it. J Squad J Squad was a series of wraparound animations to accompany full-length animated TV shows. 300 of these J Squad shorts aired in Germany, but they also received an English dub for Channel 7 and aired between 2002 and 2003. Weirdly for filler shorts though, some of J Squad received a DVD release, but no copies seem to be on sale right now. You can find a few J Squad shorts on the YouTube channel Studio 100 Kids, and a DVD review website says the DVD is around 90 minutes long, and it's just one volume. So who knows how many more of these shorts were actually released. Not a lot of people know that. A community TV game show which aired on Channel 31 in 2013, not a lot of people know that, ran for just six episodes, and only the first two have been preserved. There's a pretty good reason for that too. The hard drive containing all the episodes was stolen. Two of them were saved elsewhere, but four only existed on the stolen hard drive, and these stolen episodes had to be reshot. Unless whoever stole the hard drive actually still has them and makes them available, I don't think you'll see not a lot of people know that in the future. Stigian. Stigian was a 2000 short horror film directed by Shannon Young and James Wan, who you might know as one of the creators of the Saw series. And this short was actually James's directorial debut. There's not much you can find out about Stigian, except it features the main characters getting sucked into an alternate universe populated by crazy clowns, zombies, and more. Stigan did get a short run at the Melbourne Underground Film Festival, but that's about all. You can find commentary from Shannon and James about Stigan, and they both said they have no plans to release it, perhaps out of some sense of embarrassment or feeling it was too amateurish compared to what they've done since then. John Christian Watson Recordings John Christian Watson was Australia's third Prime Minister who was in office from April to August 1904, and he was also the very first leader of the Australian Labor Party. We do have photos of Watson, but that's all. There's not a single video or even a sound recording of him. And he is the only Australian Prime Minister for who this is the case. It would have been possible for film and sound recordings to be done of Watson back in his day. He did die in 1941, so there's a chance that there is something of him out there. But with each year that passes, any recordings that exist could continue to erode and be damaged beyond repair. Rubbish Rubbish is yet another weird piece of Australian media featuring puppets. This was a 1982 short film about a boy creating puppets using, well, rubbish. The puppets end up coming to life and the kid ends up being terrified of what he's created. Rubbish supposedly had a VHS release and found its way into libraries, but there was no real wide release of it. You couldn't find it for many, many years. Then, in September 2015, 
Lost Media Wiki found a dark cage uploaded rubbish in full, making it found. The Balmain vs North Sydney NRL game. The NRL, or the NSW RFL as it was known back then, is a sporting body that oversees rugby league in New South Wales. And one such match has the distinction of being the first televised game of rugby league in Australia. And unfortunately, you can't watch it today. On the 15th of April 1961, the Balmain Tigers defeated the North Sydney Bears at North Sydney Oval. And Channel 9 broadcast it all on live TV. It was noted by the newspapers of the day that it was the first rugby league game on TV, but despite this awareness, it seems to have been never recorded. There was capacity to record TV in those days, but it would have been limited to TV stations and those already in the industry. Unless you happen to be filming the game on TV with the use of an old home movie camera, I think this historic broadcast could be gone forever. The Hopkins The Hopkins is a cartoon from 2005 that came about from a competition by Nickelodeon Australia. Nick gave families the chance to be turned into an animated cartoon that would reflect the typical Australians of the day. As you probably guessed, the Hopkins family won and five one-minute shorts were produced based on them. As of January 2024, you can only find the series logo and a promotional image from the Hopkins. The shorts themselves are nowhere to be seen. Nothing has shown up since they aired on Nickelodeon Australia in December 2005. Dog's Head Bay A 1999 ABC comedy that barely resonated with viewers. Dog's Head Bay sees wealthy couple Alex and Vicky buy a holiday house in a sleepy town of Dog's Head Bay. The couple want to make it the place to be for other rich people, but the locals push back, including their neighbours, who they just so happen to be related to. Dog's Head Bay was quite the dud. It only had one season of 13 episodes. Even one of the stars of the show, Shane Wimington, called Dog's Head Bay the worst piece of television in the history of Australia. Today, you can find just a small promotional clip of the show. There could be more out there, but I'd be shocked to see it. Sign Sound Varieties An hour-long short released in 1934, Sign Sound Varieties was directed by Kenji Hall and it was meant to accompany his main feature film of the year, The Silence of Dean Maitland. Sign Sound Varieties was split into two parts, Evolution of a Waltz and Nautical Nonsense, and it was seen as a chance for variety performers of the day to show off their skills. This film wasn't much of a success, with reviewers criticising its lack of narrative and script, and you'll find that even its director said he wasn't proud of it. Today, just 17 and a half minutes of Sign Sound Varieties survive, and I think that's probably the best that we're gonna get. The Dinky Dies the Dinky Dies was an Australian cartoon that aired from December 1997 until May 1998. It featured a team of anthropomorphic animals going around the world and saving endangered species from the clutches of the evil Mephisto and his cronies. The Dinky Dies screened in multiple countries around the world, but you can find practically nothing about it today. You can only find one full episode of The Dinky Dies in English along with fragments of others, and there's also dubs of some episodes in Arabic, Polish, Russian, and Brazilian Portuguese. Maestro's Company The Maestro's Company was about two kids who find an opera house, except the opera performers are puppets. You'll find that Maestro's Company had 13 episodes on SBS, and it hasn't been seen since. It looks like it had two VHS releases, if these Amazon and IMDb listings are to be believed, but who knows how many episodes they actually released. I think this is quite a unique idea for the show, and I really hope that Maestro's company is found one day. 
Random Place. Random Place was a 2005 mobile soap opera featuring a bunch of Australian actors, athletes, and idol contestants. It was made up of a series of still photos and text, kind of like a live action comic book, and had unique viewing options for the day. You could receive episodes via MMS, the Random Play on the Random Place website, or even MSM Messenger. Now that's a throwback. There isn't much coverage of Random Place today, but you can still access the website via the Internet Archive. Unfortunately, you can't see the actual series itself, as trying to sign up to view it will result in a dead end. Cthulhu Cthulhu was a zero-budget obscure horror movie shot in Canberra in 1996, but it only received a release in the year 2000. As you may have guessed, it draws heavy inspiration from the work of H.P. Lovecraft. In this case, a student is worried about a friend who has become involved in a cult that wants to bring Cthulhu into our world. This film never received a theatrical release, but it was shown at the Melbourne Underground Film Festival, the same one as Diggin, and apparently it had a limited amount of DVDs made. One YouTube commenter even claimed to have been an extra on Cthulhu and have taped a DVD online, but they haven't been able to play it or otherwise copy it over. You can only find a handful of clips from Cthulhu online, but I think there's a chance that someone else out there still has a working DVD and just might not realise it's a lost film. Possession This is a 1985 soap proper that gets a little wild. The action of Possession starts off with an ASIO raid on a hotel and the death of a wealthy tycoon. And from there it spirals into a crazy story of rich people, relationship dramas, illegitimate children, and more deaths. Possession wasn't a ratings juggernaut and Channel 9 opted only for one season. And before scrapping it all together, they burnt off the remaining episodes in a graveyard time slot, and this still somehow counted towards their Australian content quota. You can find a short clip of Possession on YouTube, but not much else. Rainbow Rainbow was a 1979 children's television show created by Godfrey Phillip. It ran for five episodes and had a cast of kids from the Coffs Harbour and Lismore region. And it won a Logie, but it only aired in that Lismore area and was never picked up nationally. The NFSA does seem to have a handful of eps, but otherwise you won't find much about it. And the only footage you'll find of Rainbow out in the world seems to be from its Logie's presentation. I think it's very, very unlikely you'll see any more of this. It only aired in that one specific part of New South Wales, and I doubt it would have been recorded back then by anybody. Watch This Space Watch This Space was a sci-fi comedy for kids which aired on the ABC in 1982. It features an alien named Rufus, played by Paul Chubb, who comes down to Earth and tries to become famous. Rufus befriends a human named Ron, who helps him get his big break in show business, all the while concealing Rufus's true nature. 13 episodes of Watch This Space were made, but you can find barely five minutes of footage today in any form. The Rotting Woman 2008's Lake Mungo is one of those cult movies that came out of Australia and took everyone by surprise. Its director, Joel Anderson, actually made a short horror film beforehand in 2002. He called it The Rotting Woman. You won't find out much about this film, except it features a woman named Alison who has some kind of skin condition. Redditor Sexy Skeleton has been searching for the rotting woman for years, and while the University of Queensland does have a script, the film itself is still unavailable. Zoo Pops This is quite an old show and there's only fragments of info you can find about it. From what I can tell though, Sue Pops was a cartoon rubber show that aired on Channel 7 from 1972 to until I'm not really sure when. It featured the usual kind of host segments and a mix of live action, puppets and costumes. 
In September 2017, blogger Aussie Music Man posted the show's theme, and a couple of commenters have recalled memories of the show, including one of the apparent hosts. The National Film and Sound Archive does seem to have some items related to this series, and I also found a book called Puppets of Australia, which mentions it, and it might have some photos, but they could be of something else that the puppeteer worked on. Outside of these little tidbits though, and some TV Guide information, you probably won't find much about this one. From what I can tell, it may have been live, and given that era, it's possibly lost forever. Party Animals Party Animals is a 2003 New Zealand kids show that was aimed to preschoolers. It has a mix of suit actors and animatronics, and each character represents one of the five senses. Tippy for touch, Buddy for taste, Snuffles for smell, Chopper for hearing, and Poppy for sight. If you watch the show, you'll see them teaching kids about how to solve problems and have a party afterwards. 130 episodes were made of Party Animals, but it never received any kind of real release. You can find a few full episodes and clips on YouTube, and the New Zealand Sound and Vision Archive also has some copies, but it'd take a considerable effort to digitise them all and make them available to the masses. The Oslets I honestly can't even remember how I stumbled across the Oslets. It's one of those ones that falls into the so obscure it doesn't even have an IMDb page category. Anyway, The Oslets was a 1988 TV series featuring animal puppets, amongst them were koalas, kookaburras, and a lamb, and they tried to save their home from destruction. The Oslets was aimed at kids up to the age of 7, and apparently cost $1.2 million to make, and there were also plans for international sales. And it seems that it at least made it to Canada, and possibly France, or maybe French Canada. There were 13 half hour episodes made, but today you can only find the intro and a clip from one episode on YouTube. There are some eBay sellers who have tapes of the Oslets though, but they only cover 4 eps in total. Who knows if all the episodes were on VHS, or if they still survive at all today. The Magical Tin Tookies the Magical Tin Tookies was a puppet comedy troupe created by Peter Scriven in 1956, and its first show took place in Sydney's Elizabeth Theatre. The Tin Tookies were enough of a hit that they toured the country for the next few decades, and they wound up having a TV special. But you won't find out much about this TV special anywhere. It does seem to have aired in April 1976 on the ABC, and that's about all you'll find. There doesn't seem to be any set photos or footage in existence, and the only evidence that I've found is this TV Guide listing. I'm really at a loss for this one, especially with how little information there is about it. Crash Palace Crash Palace was a 2001 soap opera which aired on Foxtel. Set in a backpacker hostel in Sydney's King's Cross district, Crash Palace featured a lot of raunch and adult scenes that weren't really shown on Australian free-to-air soap operas at the time. Apparently it had a couple of topless scenes, or so I'm told anyway. The cast at Crash Palace featured actors from many other Australian shows of the era, including The Secret Life of Us, All Saints, and Home and Away. It ran for 65 episodes before being cancelled, but today there seems to be little out there you can find about the series. There's definitely no episodes or clips out there as far as I can tell, which is pretty strange for such a recent series with so many eps. Crash Palace does seem to have been archived with the National Film and Sound Archive, but otherwise I don't know if we'll be seeing this one anytime soon, unless any of the people involved have some copies. Flea threatens Tism Radio Interview This is an absolutely wild one that I only learnt about at the start of the year, and I'm so glad that I did. In 1995, Australian band Tism released a song called He'll Never Be an Old Man River, which heavily references the death of actor River Phoenix. It was critically appraised and some people interpreted it as mocking the sorts of people who obsess over every detail of a celebrity's death rather than mocking the deaths themselves. 
There was one person who really didn't like the song though, Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Flea was a friend of Rivers and was actually with him on the night that he died. The story goes that Flea gave an Australian radio interview where he actually threatened to bash or kill Tism as he felt they were mocking Rivers' death. The actual audio of this alleged interview hasn't emerged in all of these years, casting doubt on whether it actually happened. You can see online that Tism fans have been searching for the interview for years, and the band themselves have commented on it. There's also a Triple J article that mentions Flea discussing his like of the song in an off-air conversation. Whether he actually went on air with his comments over Tism, and if a copy of this interview still exists, will likely take a bit of digging. Reddit of People Want Ducks has been searching for it, so if you have any ideas on this one, then do get in touch with him. The Pokemon Park 2000 Sailboat Show The Pokemon Sailboat Show was a live event that took place on Sydney Harbour in September 2000. Full credit to YouTuber and Redditor MuesMe700 who inspired this entry. They've also done a video about it and you should totally check it out. In short, the Pokemon Sailboat Show was held in conjunction with Pokemon Part 2000 and the very first Pokemon World Championships in Sydney. You'll find that many stage shows took place around this time in conjunction with the event, but the biggest of them all was the Pokemon Sailboat Show. There's not a lot known about the show, but it's thought it involved a cannon battle between Team Rocket and Sir Pokemon, including Pikachu and Charmander, and it's also possible that the actual championship trophy was part of the story. Most of the information about this event comes from Italian and Spanish magazines of the time. They contain a couple of photos, and Muse Me has also found a small bit of footage, but not the entire sailboat event. I'm absolutely stunned at how little information there is on this show, and that more people in the Lost Media community aren't talking about it. You have to remember that it took place right around the time of the Sydney Olympics, and the world's media was all over the city, and Pokemon was huge at this time. Fingers crossed that somebody was taping it, whether a long forgotten official version or some fan cam footage. The Chatswood Youth Unknown Song The Chatswood Youth Unknown Song is an extremely specific and obscure piece of lost media, or at the very least, is a piece of incomplete media whose origin we're not entirely sure of. The story begins when the Redditor Chernyat discovered a VHS tape in an op shop in Newtown, New South Wales. She thought she was getting a copy of The Little Rascals, but when she opened the tape cover, she instead found a VHS tape that read Chatswood Youth Mono. If you watch the video, you'll see a bunch of teenagers living life in 1990s Chatswood at the Chatswood Youth Centre, and at the start and end of the video, there is a song featured that nobody can identify to date. This unknown song sounds a bit like Blur's Song 2, but it's undeniably Australian. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly who made the video or who sung this song. We just know it had to have been done sometime around 1997. Chernyat has done her research and managed to ID some of the people in the tape. Unfortunately, they don't know who made the song, but they did tell Chernyat that the video was part of a workshop organised by a male staff member at the youth centre, but they couldn't remember their name. I think it's most likely that whoever performed this unknown song were a local at, or may have been teenagers themselves, possibly from the school. If you know anyone who was a student at Chatswood High in the late 1990s, or worked at the youth centre then, or was even in a band at the time, then please let them know about this and pass on this video. See if they can remember anything. And of course, if you recognise yourself in this video, I would like to share your memories of those days, and please get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. And that is it for this iceberg. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. 
I made this iceberg from the ground up and the Lost Media Wiki was an invaluable tool for finding entries and information about them. So shout out to all the contributors at the Lost Media Wiki. You're amazing. And also a big thank you to anybody who has commented or DM'd me with suggestions of other Australian Lost Media that I might not be aware of because they contributed to this iceberg too. And I would just say to everybody to keep your eyes open and you might find something on this list that hasn't been found. It could be a digital file, it could be an old tape, whether that's a real or a U-Matic tape or a VHS tape probably. They're all valuable sources, so keep an eye out for them and help preserve a bit of Australia's media history because we really need to and should. Anyway, thank you again for watching and take care.